Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today we're gonna jump into something a little different. I know we're known for doing pro touring and resto mod cars, but I have a real thing for Porsche and I have a real thing for custom built vehicles. And this is a combination of that. This is not just a Porsche, this is a full custom. So you guys, this is Alan. Alan drove down from the Santa Cruz area to show us what it's about and you built the car. Myself and partners, yeah. You're not a builder, you're an engineer in the helmet industry. Yep. Your approach to building I'm gonna trust is gonna be that of an engineer, still as an artist, creative guy. You're not gonna let mechanical elements slide because you can't figure it out or it's too much effort or something like that. We took every aspect of it, broke it apart, acid dipped it, and when we rebuilt it, we looked up RS specs for a Euro RS 964. I found the specs from Porsche. We seam welded the whole chassis to Porsche Euro RS specs so the car's stiffer. So you're not gonna take a Euro RS and cut it apart. Right. But a 1999-64, yeah, no problem. I mean, yeah. it pisses a lot of Porsche people off. Yeah. But we didn't really care about that. We wanted to build this. And I mean, your customer yeah. wanted to build, yeah. Yes. It's kind of funny with the 964. It seems like it wasn't very beloved by Porsche lovers until Singer started doing what they did. Now, all of a sudden, the 964 became a fairly rare car. Yes, absolutely. And I'm a longtime hot rod guy. I've worked on hot rods and muscle cars since yeah. I was like eight. So this was actually my first go at a Porsche. And so I had a guy helping me and he was like, we gotta find something that's unmolested, unwrecked, low miles, yada, yada, yada. So we found a car with 32,000 miles, original miles on it, maintained, had all the records, had everything. So it was an immaculate. It was perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you could stomach something like that. Hindsight, we didn't need that. We just needed something that wasn't wrecked. The guys that helped me build this doghouse restoration did the lion's share of the work. Mm -hmm. And then Danny from DJ Interiors Customs, he did the interior. And so he's got an engineer that works for him. I rendered the car and I show you the rendering. It looks like a picture of this car. Every last detail we wanted to do like it was a production car. We scanned the whole car. Yeah. The whole car's in CAD. No stone left unturned. I love it, dude. And it's, uh, this yeah. is a hot rod in my mind. And that's how yeah. we built it. And we wanted it to be this nasty little car. Yeah. It is every aspect of nasty. Nasty. What's the engine in this? So the engine is built by Jeff Gamroth at Rothsport. Sure. And it's sure. a 4.0. It's it's still air-cooled, but 4.0. Still air-cooled, 4.0, non-turbo. That was, I was very specific. I didn't want the big inner cooler wing. I wanted it to be the, the slant back. It's got like 425 horsepower at just about 8,000 RPMs. And this car stock would have had what, like 300 horsepower? Mm -hmm. I think, I think they were just under 300. Yeah. yeah. Wow, is that just beautiful, man. Gosh. There's no heater in it because it's a California car, Southern California car at that. So we got rid of all the heater cowling for it. Notice there's no AC pump. Mm -hmm. So we put electronic AC, which is in the frunk. It's just the engine. This is friggin' stunning. It's, it's got a 993 fan blade on it. So it doesn't have straight fans here, a little different. It's all MoTeC. Really? Mm -hmm. Jeff was building the engine. He told me it'd take about a year. He did it a lot faster than that. When we acid dipped the car, the engine was actually ready far before the car was. So he put it on a shelf. Well, he dyno tunes them, drops it in. Got me all the way down to bleeding the clutch, everything. He also did the suspension for me. It's got all JRZ adjustable coilovers on it. Cause just the man, as far as these cars go. Better believe it. It's stiff for a street car, but it rips. I'll bet. I mean, weight wise, what are you, 3,000 pounds maybe? 2,700 pounds. You're 20, you lightened it up that much? So the, the car is mostly carbon fiber, which nobody realizes. Really? Yeah. The rear bumper's carbon, the quarters are carbon all the way up to about here uh -huh. to the ground. Uh -huh. The rockers are carbon, the front fenders are carbon. If you look at them, you can actually see the ripple because you can't get carbon perfectly God, smooth. I mean, barely, dude, yeah. God dang. When you're inside the car, you can see the ripple more because you're looking long ways. And then the front bumper and the splitter are carbon. We designed the bumper, and because we were gonna originally build two of these, we were gonna build this and a Targa top, we built a mold for this bumper. God, so you got it all aired out too to- Yeah, so there's- Are those feeding brakes or something? These feed the brakes, yep. this does the oil cooler, and that does the AC condenser. So wow, bro, 2,700 pounds, 400 and what horsepower? 425. We talked about doing lightweight glass. We didn't, it's got all production, regular weight glass in it. I, I really, and I know a lot of you guys don't know it about me, but I really am like a hardcore Porsche guy. So I don't know how any Porsche guy could be upset. Everything you've done here is Porsche, tastefully Porsche. Yeah. So you've obviously, your fenders and quarters are widened from the traditional 964. So this matches up to the turbo, yeah. you're saying? Yeah, it's stock 965 turbo. It's the turbo width. 
But it's all you and, and the doghouse guys. This is all your creation, right? The shape of your quarters, your fenders, your yeah. bumper, your spoilers yep. and splitters. Yeah, so doghouse and I worked on the outside together with a yeah. buddy of mine. He was actually an industrial designer for the automotive industry. So yeah. he did my renderings and the bumper is actually his. Like I was like, I want these big sweeping vents. And because the 964s and the 965 have that big like oval with the one thin piece of plastic and the plastic's always warped and yeah. they just never look right. And so I was like, get rid of that, I don't want it. I mean, even what you did to the Porsche logo, dude, is so <laughs> bitchin'. Thank That's you. so class, man. Yeah, I just, I tried to find, like Dan at Augment Wheels did my wheels. They're custom three-piece wheels. I've never heard of them. Yeah, man. exactly. And like, I tried to find people that did what I want. So these are like a Campanello. Which are the 15s, but these are the eight, these are 18 inch three piece wheels that look like a stretch Campanella. And then obviously, what are bronze. the sizes of them? So that's an 18 by nine, and that's an 18 by 12 and a half. And then what tires do you? What what are your sizes on tires? Uh, those are 265s, and those are 305s. <laughs> so we tried to fit a 335 on the ground. Well, man. I tried to get a 335, but because the lip underneath these is really big because it's carbon. We wanted to have strength again to like knowing sure. materials I've worked with carbon. So, and you want to be able to go full lock to lock. And we wanted to go full lock to lock uh -huh. and not rub. Uh -huh. and so, we had to go a little bit narrow. So, I have a set of 335s sitting in my shop. Ain't gonna, of, ain't gonna make it under there. Not under there, but they're gonna go on my brother Chevelle. So nah. They'll go somewhere. God, those wheels are beautiful. And I see, uh, I mean, I can't miss the Brembo. So, you're running Brembo brakes on the car? Yep. They're as big as we could get going from 18 because I like the look of the 18, yeah. not the 20. Obviously, you can get bigger brakes. I'm with you. So, they're 15 inch Brembos, six piston in the front, six piston in the back. Are they manual or powered brakes? They're powered brakes. Mm -hmm. Manual steering, powered brakes. Manual steering. Mm -hmm. I guess the car's so light, it yeah. can't be, even in a tight spot, it can't no, be. No, it steers. Right? And I mean, it steers. Like it's a race car. It's a luxury race car. Little things, like I said, we started We started with a cherry car. It had a sunroof in it. I wanted a non-sunroof car, we couldn't find one. So the guy's doghouse, they were like, well, let's just fill the sunroof. I'm like, that's a big hole. I'm like, yeah, we got it. And dude, you could never tell it had a sunroof. Especially, the car's black, dude. Yeah. It's gonna show The car's every... actually blue. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the car's blue. Come on, really? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm out of here, I'm done. <laughs> No. Really? Yeah, it's a really. Did any of you guys see the? I it was purple. Yeah, it's a dark blue. What was your guess? Black. Thank you, Paul. Black. Thank you, Assad. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a total custom color? Like, hundred percent. Yeah, it's a gorgeous color. The shaping that you guys did on the body is just so bitching. The, the fitment of the rocker, pulling the drip rails off. I mean, it's, I don't care how pure you are of a Porsche guy. Like when you were at Quail with it, w w did you hear any bad comments from any of the port? Cause those no. are like the hardcore. Yeah. Oh, you changed the valve cap. Like you can't do that. So the inside <laughs> and like, well, do you want to see under here? I definitely want to see under here, yes. You'll kind of get an idea of what the interior is going to look like. I can't believe you don't do Porsche. Like, it's so wild to me. So, and Danny, who did the interior, this is his first, like, full Porsche, too. I didn't even know Danny before this doghouse actually found Danny for me. I didn't want a classic Porsche interior guy because I wanted square, more modern. Basically, what I when I started out on this car, what I wanted to do was build a 964 in 2020. That's what we went with. Did you guys make the filler? No. <laughs> That's something you found somewhere? We were gonna make a filler, and I found that on Speedway for 105 bucks. Oh, it was bare cool. aluminum. Oh my God, is that just... But I saw dude. it, and I was like, that's perfect. Are you seeing this? No, you're in the way. Sorry. <laughs> dude, it's a, look at... It's a oh my weird. God, that's so bitching. That's a $100 piece? Yeah. Dude, everything's on magnets. So it's always gonna fall right back into place. Yeah. You're not, and easy access to everything. And his guys were gonna take all, so all the dots are from when we scanned it. And I was like, leave them all on, that's cool. Yeah, there's dots everywhere. Yeah, the wow, whole. Wow, dude. So anywhere that wasn't seen when the car was put together. We left them. We left them. Because it just shows the work that those guys put in. Like, like I said, there's interior guys and you know the door panels are held on by wood screws. Oh man, that's not cool. Seriously, that is not cool. It's not cool. And more and more nowadays, you're, you're starting to see a lot of this, like the avant-garde yeah. guys out east, you know, yeah. there's more of these interior guys yeah. are, you have to. Yeah. It's a lot of money, but like I said, we were working with Singer S it. budget. 
Like he had a DLS on order. Like That's what? a million plus dollar car, isn't 1. it? The 5 DLS? 1.5. Yeah. So DJ did the whole stereo, the stereo in the sink rips. That's the AC pump. It's still got windshield wiper washers on it. Like it's a Porsche. I mean, it's like not. It's meant to go drive, rain, shine, whatever. I drove it 650 miles yesterday. Oh, exhaust wise, by the way, we never got to that. Is that another, it's is Jeff. that a Jeff? Yeah. yeah, all titanium. We didn't want it super loud. When you hear it idle, it's not loud. No, it's not. When you get on it, it comes it's alive. mean. It has mufflers on it, but it doesn't have cats or anything like that. Yeah, go ahead. What I've been waiting for, man. <laughs> I, no, I really geek on interiors, oh, dude. I, 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 no kidding. Oh my God, this is so ridiculously bitching. Holy hell. This is a lot of one-off stuff in the interior. It's all 100% one-off. And everything works. And I'm like- I'm gonna sit in yeah, here and look it. around while we're talking. What are these seats, by the way? We started it with Recaro's, but Recaro's are really tall. So Danny cut them down and he's like, what if we just cut them apart? So he completely cut them apart. We had like four or five different designs. It doesn't have five points in it, so. You just have your stra standard yeah, shoulder Yeah, because it doesn't have strap. a roll bar. And that's sure. another one of my sure. pet peeves is cars that have five point seats, but they don't have five points in them. So like, they're a DJ seat. What is the steering wheel? Is steering this a one-off spark, well? It's a spark steering wheel. And then he covered it in carbon and split it like that. And dude, all the carbon worked into these seats. That, that wasn't stock to this, right? No, that, I don't know. So it's, he really took a Recaro, cut it down, and turned it into his seat. Yeah. And just kept the framework, basically. Yeah, and they're comfortable too. Totally comfortable. I notice on this side, you got so you usually keep a floor mat over here, but you want to expose. No, really? No, that's what the carbon's for. Dude, car I, part of me doesn't want to put my foot down in here. It's so cool. No, it's what we were saying before. Like, I want to drive cars. So with the carbon there, it can be polished, it can be re-cleared, it can be like, the floor in this isn't carpet, it's leather, it's embossed leather. It won't wear super well, but the carbon, you can repolish it and do what you want. What are these pedals? They're one-offs. I mean, it, even the vents, right? Like the- The vents are Porsche 964 vents that he machined and then we anodized them, and put the carbon lay in them and just put that over the top of it. So these holes still work. Like I said, the car has yeah. AC. All these knobs too, Everything. Right? These are all one-off knobs. Everything. The bezels on the gauges, the faces on the gauges. What are the gauges? They're video gauges that we just rebuilt. It's like a modern car. The door handles work like a modern car. The window switches are out of a brand new Porsche. And the center one, that's the volume and bass control and program control for, Here the, it is? for the stereo, yeah. Is it an actual center console? Oh, yeah. Where's, oh. You gotta be kidding so me. So like there's a storage area in the back on top of the sub box. So there's two tins in this car that are right behind the seats and that storage, like I have a tool bag in there right now. Oh my God, I'm so floored by this car, bro. <laughs> the shifter, I mean like. That's Jeff's shifter. So he does his own shifters and then Danny cut the top of it off and built the knob. I was like, okay, cool, but how are you gonna attach it? And he's like, I'm gonna tap down the middle. So the indicator is just magneted on the top. So like if you put your thumb on it, you can spin that. So you have that, but you don't have any exposed hardware to hold that thing on. <laughs> we didn't like that it had an e-brake because it screwed up the symmetry of the car. So yeah. we put an electronic e-brake in it. The rear deck lid that you know is motorized still works. Really? Mm -hmm. That's all Porsche. But like, if you look, there's a pattern in the seats. So in the 70s, yeah. Porsche did a Pache, what they call Pache, and it was like a real retro no, I know inlay. exactly what you're talking about, sure. So Danny was like, he's like, I wanna do this. And he's, he's like, look up Porsche Pache. So I looked up and I was like, are you crazy? And he's like, but let me let me put my spin on it. And so he laser etched it into the Alcantara. Like that's the things like the Porsche guys, like there's nothing Porsche about the inside of this car, basically. I mean, you're right, you're right, you're right. It's very, it's a, it's a massive departure from what we know Porsche itself creates. But everything you did here is fully complimentary to the whole car. I mean, I, I any Porsche guy that doesn't like this car, personally, I, I'm sorry, you ain't a Porsche guy. I, I, no, I'm, I'm serious, dude, I say bullshit. And it's why I've loved Singer so much, I've loved what Rod Emery does so much, Roof. I love the guys that have reimagined, rethought, recreated Porsche and, and, and took something that was now antiquated because of the old technology and made it right. much better. I mean, one of Rod's 356s, dude, now you're talking about 200 plus horsepower. That bone stock one on a good day, it's about 85. Right. Your it's doors going. are tight, dude. I I yeah. close that door, there it goes. That's Porsche though, right? It's all brand new rubber. I mean, yeah. we finished yeah. this car in April. And you've already driven it how many miles though, you said? like About 1,200. 
<laughs> so, Love it. Man, there's gonna be more to talk about, I'm sure. Let's 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 get cameras and go for a little drive. Luckily, we've been lucking out on the weather. You guys, we had a 30% chance of rain here, which anywhere else in the country, you go, whatever. In California, Southern California, 30% is scary. I promise you, there's people in caps and gloves right now. <laughs> They've got their umbrella out. They're ready for it, man. So since it's not raining, we're gonna go drive it. Dude, we, we get to shoot a lot of really, I mean, regularly, amazing, amazing, amazing vehicles. Every once in a while, I get behind the wheel of something and, and instantly the experience kicks in of like, holy shit, I can't believe I get to actually drive this thing. I say it every time I drive this car, like it's, I told my brother, I was like, if I had a million dollars, I'd buy this car. If you know what you're looking at, this car is wicked from the outside. It's so understated, bro. The average eye sees this as, oh, that's a nice old black Porsche. Right. It's it's stiff. It's stiff. It's stiff. Yeah. But it's not a, I don't know, I've been in cars where it's uncomfortable stiff. Yeah, this it, is, it this bounces. This feels very Porsche to me. It bounces a little bit, it pulls a little bit, but. Yeah. No shit, it's a race car in sheep's clothing. Roth Sport's kind of legendary for building Porsche, huh? Oh, Air cooled yeah. Porsche. That's engines. what Jeff does. I mean, yeah. he's the man. I mean, his shop's just, it's pretty small relatively. Like, it's in the back, kind of like your shop, it's in the back. He does these engines where he, like, splits them and twin turbos them. I mean, I, like, dude, it's so far yeah. out of my realm. Like, yeah. the flat sixes, like, you listen to it, Jeff might as well be talking in freaking, well, German. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't I have get a clue it. what he's saying. Yeah, because it's not it's not the world you came up yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. God, this car just feels wonderful, and I I cannot get over this interior, bro. It's, I mean, by far one of the finest interiors I've ever, yeah, ever yeah. seen. Like I said, we talked about a couple different people doing interior. When I met Danny and saw his work, I was like, yep, he's up in Hayward. So everybody, not doing this for a living, I had to find vendors that were close to me you know like right I have a day job so right right you right, know right. Um, so I had to, <laughs> I had to find vendors that I could get to and like you know go to on the way to work like doghouse I can is literally on my way to work like we had conversations every Tuesday morning and yeah. I'm at work by nine Maybe you're used to it because you've sat here, you put yeah. a bunch of miles on the car. You, you built it, you know, you're there through the whole process. I mean, bro, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in some really exceptional cars all the time. It's, I, 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 I can't get over this interior, man. Yeah, it's, you know, it's like we wanted a really big stereo, but you, I didn't want huge speakers showing. I didn't want round speakers. Yeah, and the audio in here, you, you guys, we can't play, you know, we'll get, We'll get flagged for copyright stuff. Sorry, we're about to hit water, but That's I know right. you're not worried because you drive this car. But the audio is like, like you ever hear about those world record of audio shows that yeah. they do where they try to basically blow your fucking head off with yep. audio? Yeah. Yeah. This is kind of like that. I stuck my head in here and it wasn't <laughs> quiet, no. but it's super crisp and clean. Like all the... Yeah. Because my brother and I, when we were going through college, like we built stereos and... I was had interviewed stereo guys, and Danny's like, I can do the stereo. And I was like, oh, okay. One less shop for me to stop at. Go for it, do it. Yeah. And he's, and he's like, all right, well, this, we were talking about putting a screen right here, and he found this. It's so perfect. Because I wanted dude. CarPlay, and that's a screen. I mean, it showed me the map to get to your shop, and so it's CarPlay, but it, it's a little but it's not thing. annoying. One of those big screens would have been awful in here. That's that would have been horrible. That's what you pissed the Porsche guys off That would have been so. awful, dude. Yeah. I would have been pissed at that, because yeah. it would have, I mean, it's it's such an elegant fitting interior. It's still, it's like dramatically not Porsche, but at the same time, it's all Porsche, dude. My key's still over here on the left. The gauges, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, this is still pure Porsche all the way. Yeah. Like, all this is still Porsche. We just re it. You know, it's like, because you can re-engineer all that. But it's like, dude, why? You, where you got to draw the line somewhere, and he's like, yeah. and Danny's like, well, let's just re-knob everything. I mean, so dude, it's all still factory controls. Yep, just, yeah. just. I use retrofit AC, so it has electronic AC on it. I took apart the the AC control box, and you plug their pieces in, take it down, and have it recharged, and you have AC. You guys, so 
so the quick version is Alan built this car for somebody else. Now the car is already going to be sold. You're looking at north of a million dollars to buy this car, right? Yeah, yeah. Now I know a lot of you guys are going to freak out on that number, right? And look, let's be honest. I don't know about you, bro. I can't afford a million bucks for a car. If I could, I'd be talking to you about this one. <laughs> yeah, me neither. The interior alone, you're at about a quarter million dollars on the interior of this car, including what we have up front, right? Yeah, every, everything. All the interior shop work is yeah. about a quarter million dollars. Yeah, and that being said, I don't want to, I don't want everybody to think that Danny is like unreachable. Like I told Danny, go balls to the wall. No, but like, this is absurd, dude. Yes. This is this is one of the finest interiors I've ever seen, and I've been in custom builds that are three, four, five million dollar builds. Oh God, and the tone this car makes. And I mean, I haven't even gotten into the power band on uh, it. The exhaust that Jeff built was, I mean, it, it is just wonderful. Perfect. Yeah, but it's so, it is so Porsche, dude. Yeah. That's that tone to me is signature. Porsche, it truly is. That's that flat six, yeah. you know? Oh my God, this car is so sick. You gotta know, I want to tell you to like, so I need to go home, leave the car overnight. I'm just gonna take a quick <laughs> couple runs up Lower Tahunga, uh -huh. maybe hit the crash for a minute. You know, you guys, look, we can't do what we would love to do, which is go out and flog the hell out of this car through canyons and stuff. But, boy, you can just tell, I mean, it's so articulate, yeah. like every little move. Oh, that sound, bro. So that's 6,000 RPMs, you're and just, we still got 1,800 weight. You're just getting into it. Thank you for letting me drive the damn car. Because of that, I always feel the need to be highly respectful. And I know it's insured, but you know, if I gotta pay the deductible, I'm a little screwed, I think. <laughs> trips me out, bro, that you're more from the world I am, the muscle car world, and, and this is and your first time building a and Porsche. Every, and most everybody that worked on this car, you know, except for Jeff, which Jeff is really the, like, yeah, that part of this car, and this, you know, and the handling, like, again, I just went to Jeff and I was like, I don't know shit about it, I know they're badass, and he's like, well, this is what I do. And I was like, cool. Like, it's got 993 uprights on it, not 964s. Did the base is set off a little bit wider. Like, I wouldn't know to do that shit. Yeah. I mean, this is just, what, what a joy. Oh my God, the exhaust tone of this car is so bitchy. Dude, I'm stoked you're a Porsche guy. Because Danny said he met you, I think, at Grand National. Very possible, And I sure. think he said he sure. showed you a couple pictures and you were like, I'm a super Porsche guy, so then this chick's walking on raccoons. That's badass. That's awesome. Hold on, can I take a picture? Never seen this before. Somebody walking her pet raccoons, which is just wild. Not one of them, two of them. Two of them. <laughs> Have a good day. Catch rain coming down. Oh yeah, pretty heavily. Yeah. That's what tell windshield wipers for? I love that. That's your approach with this car, dude. It's a it, you're talking about a million dollar vehicle going from Santa Cruz Mountains down to Southern California. Let's go for a drive. And Chris, the guy that owns it right now, uh, who I built it for, I was like, hey, I was like, I think I know the answer to this, but if I drive it, and he's like, you built it to drive it and it needs miles on it, so go for it. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> and you know what? By now you've found every bug yep. there was to be found on this car. Yeah. You've got how many miles on it? About 1,200. About 1,200. You put about 600 on yesterday, I you put said? 650 on last night. Jesus, yeah. Oh, 
Okay, I'll, I'll, okay. Because that's where, like, I'm actually not afraid of it. It's not like the thousand horsepower car, car when yeah. somebody says no, it's stay not going to kick out. It's very stable, but that's where it like it really puts you in your seat. I know you're again like me coming from the, the muscle car world. You're so used to torque right now, right, right now, right now. Yeah. You know, and it's but it's a different kind of torque, and it's oh, it's fun. Like it's oh yeah, a, it's a freaking blast to drive it because you're not used to that, and that the, the exhaust note that it makes is just like, dude, like no joke. I'd like to get out and have you drive by me once because <laughs> I've never heard it. I mean. I'll keep driving the car. <laughs> Here's how good this car is. When cars are perfect to me or close to perfect, I find one gripe. Here's my one gripe, and I'll bet Too you got close. the same. Yes. That's right. Too right? close. So what I'm talking about, you guys, is the levers right here for, what's that for? Cruise control. No, that's, wind, and, wind, that's cruise control, windshield wiper, and the washer fluid. Right. That's my only gripe, yep. is they're slightly Mine too, too close. This needs to be a little longer. This is something special, this car. This would be, I got to imagine, like if you got to, before we knew about Singer Porsche and the name that's, you know, that obviously now we recognize as being Singer Porsche. I got to imagine this is probably a similar experience of like, this is one of the most refined, beautiful, yet raw cars I've, I've ever driven. This interior is like mind numbing how good this car is. Mind boggling. It sounds so sick. Dude. You want to get out and hear it? Yeah. Yeah, we'll move place. In my opinion, Alan built the perfect 911. The car does everything you want, and I didn't even get to get into turns, you know, which would have been a blast to go see how it handles, but you can tell from driving it down the road, built to handle, the glorious sound of that screaming four liter, that interior, 
just truly, truly exceptional. So as always, you guys, a big thanks for hanging and watching what we do, and I will see you in the next one. All right, man, later.